Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Now in case you didn't know, this past weekend had the rematch between Srisakat Sorungvisai of Thailand and Roman Chocolatito Gonzalez of Nicaragua. We're going to be doing a quick film study on that match, so let's do it. Okay, so the first thing I'd like to talk about is the importance of lead foot dominance in boxing. It is important to know that this was a matchup between a southpaw and an orthodox fighter. So it becomes much more important to establish foot position since your lead foot is on the same side as your opponent's lead foot. Here we see Sorungvisai's lead foot on the outside of Chocolatito's lead foot. This puts Sorungvisai in an advantageous position for a number of reasons. Defensively, this would place Sorungvisai's head on the outside of Chocolatito's lead hand. This means if Chocolatito were to throw a jab, Sorungvisai would easily be able to slip to the outside since his head is already halfway there. Also, since Sorungvisai's head is positioned on the outside of Chocolatito's lead hand, Chocolatito wouldn't be able to land a lead hook with any power behind it. Lastly, this position allows Sorungvisai to create distance between himself and Chocolatito's right hand or power hand. In boxing, your first line of defense is always going to be your distance because if you're either too far or too close to be hit, you will not get hit. If Chocolatito were to throw his right hand, he would have to reach all the way across his body and travel a considerable distance to connect on Sorungvisai. Simply put, the punch would be much too easy to see coming all while putting himself in a dangerous position to be countered and that will we will come back to that later so what does lead foot dominance get you offensively this position exposes your opponent's center line so the most common weapons we see usually in this position are either the lead hook around the gloves or the straight left hand between the glove so so wrong side notices that Chocolatito has a high guard, so what he does is that he throws the right hook around Chocolatito's gloves and then pivots out to the outside, forcing Chocolatito to change his position. And then he goes and controls them a little bit more. So just like establishing dominant lead foot position by getting onto the outside, it is also possible to launch attacks coming from an inside angle as well. This would be typically used to launch an attack up the middle, although not preferred, it is possible to do. So here we're going to see Chocolatito take a step and go onto the inside angle of Sir Rinkersai's lead foot. From here he's going to launch a 1-2 which lands, which is very good. And then he keeps his right hand out to control Sarungvisai's head to not allow Sarungvisai to counter him with either a straight left hand or a right hook. So Sarungvisai here is now going to duck under and outside to get away from Chocolatito. But Chocolatito is going to notice this and then launch a left hook on the way outside. So now as Rungvisai ducks down, he has no choice but to come back up and regain his balance. So as he's rising up, Chocolatito is going to meet him with a right hand. Right there. And then smother. Now, since Rungvisai was able to establish lead foot dominance over Chocolatito over and over again, he was able to land right hooks around the gloves of Chocolatito all night. And now we're going to take a look at some of the more important right hooks that he was able to land on Chocolatito. So we see Sora Rungvisai establish lead foot dominance. Way, his way on the outside of Chocolatito's foot. And Chocolatito understands this and goes into a high guard. So are we here? And then Sorungisai lands this big right hook around the gloves as Chocolatito throws the right hand. And down he goes. 
Now it's very important to note, like I said earlier in the video, that if Chocolatito were to throw the right hand while his opponent had lead foot dominance on him, that he would have to reach across his body and travel too long of a distance to reach his opponent. Now Chocolatito Gonzalez threw the right hand anyway and was easily countered by that right hook. Okay, so now I'm going to show you briefly how to defend yourself when your opponent establishes lead foot dominance on you. So when Sorongvisai was able to establish lead foot dominance on Chocolatito, Chocolatito simply covered up and instead of readjusting his position, he instead threw his right hand and ended up getting dropped. So right now we're going to take a look at Guillermo Rigandau and it, him using an example of escaping lead foot dominance in his fight against Nonito Donaire. So here, take a close look at the position of the two fighters right now. Nonito Donaire is going to step over to the outside of Guillermo Rigandau. And right now he has established lead foot dominance over Rigandau. But what is Rigandau going to do? Instead of simply covering up and trying to block Donaire's punches, just as Chocolatito just did and ended up getting dropped by a right hand, Rigandau is instead going to take his left foot and pivot all the way around to safety. So essentially what did he just do? What he just did is simply just switch positions with Nonito Donaire. Guillermo Rigandau is going to occupy the vacated space by Donaire so that Donaire is not able to hit him and that's all that needs to be done to get back to safety okay so once again this is in this later in the same exact round so Rungvisai is able to get lead foot dominance once again on Chocolatito although you can't see it in this picture he does have lead foot dominance on Chocolatito and once again Chocolatito, instead of adjusting his position, is going to go for the right hand, which is way too far away from Sorung Visai, and once again gets countered with that right hook. And down he goes once again. Thanks for watching guys. As always, I hope you enjoyed the video. I knew I said I was going to do the Gennady Golovkin breakdown, but that will be coming later this week. I was pl pleasantly surprised by this fight, and I really thought I had to do a breakdown of it. So I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you guys later this week with my final Golovkin breakdown ahead of his super fight with Canelo Alvarez. See you next time.